What efforts are there to boost agriculture at this stage? Because even though we're talking about a modern Africa, 70% of Africans are employed within the agro sector. Yes, and I think that remains a big challenge. And the fact that you define that agriculture within Africa has not developed as any one of us would expect it. And you'd say that part of the challenge really as re within agriculture lies on the nature of agriculture. I think agriculture carries mainly two types of risks broadly. And you'd say it's mainly production risks, which are linked in with the weather conditions, that we have a drought. Of course, the other is a market risk. Mm. And from the African side, you'd say that we've been hit by both, but the biggest challenge is really the market risk, in that the market risk, in that our price formation is not good enough, but also because we don't have a strong enough demand to d demand for the produce that right. is there, and therefore be consumed. And on the other hand, therefore, because of that, we've also had limited investment in agro-processing, which then also shortens the, the shelf life, I meaning that you produce and immediately have to try and sell. What can we do to commercialize agriculture. We've seen in countries like Malawi, the government stepping in to review how grain boards operate to try to influence the prices that farmers get for their goods at the market level. I think the biggest challenge with it is re one really coordinating whatever policies are there from, from the government side. That's around infrastructure and having coordination in similar areas, meaning that co coordinating ensure that whatever investment is happening in infrastructure is linked up to the investment or support being given to agriculture. Meaning if you draw an example like you've drawn up of Malawi having support for fertilizer, but is that fertilizer going into a specific area where there's been investment in improving the road structure to link up whatever is being produced back into the market? Because remember what the biggest challenge is that you tend to have production in a rural area mm -hmm. with also a localized market. I mean at the moment you have harvest and your prices completely drop and that becomes a bigger right. challenge. We're told that there's also a big need to mechanize uh, farming techniques and a big push to introduce new technologies. It's not just about fertilizer subsidy schemes like in Malawi, but it's really changing uh, the scale at which farmers produce because we've got a lot of small scale farmers and supporting the inputs um, at a variety of levels, irrigation being a huge cost and ensuring that credit is available for things like that. Well, I, be I believe the, the best approach is really to make an assessment of what is currently there. Yes, I agree, predominantly small scale agriculture. But small scale agriculture has its own efficiencies. These farmers respond to prices just like anyone else. In planning to invest in a, in a maize crop or a bean crop, the farmer thinks of what is the potential that he or she will generate at the end of that season. And once that there's a risk of not being able to attain that, then there is a, dis it's a disincentive as to how much you will invest. Therefore, the farmer won't want to put in fertilizer, won't want to put in seed. Mm -hmm. And to drive that, you'd actually argue that the process has got to be looked at. I tend to refer to it as from the right hand of the value, right hand side of the value chain, mm -hmm. meaning that if he's going to produce beans, where are those beans being sold? What's the market? And can the farmer be linked into that market? So that you then say that whatever's got to happen has got to be looked at in the broad view in terms of the value mm -hmm. chain. Can you introduce or attract some bit of adding value in terms of improving the shelf life right. of the bean? Because that will add, add the value that is exp the farmer is exposed to and help the farmer make a correct decision. Chris, just coming to this conversation, um, we're beginning to see governments sit up and take notice of agriculture yeah. purely because of what it can contribute to GDP, especially when we saw volatility in commodity prices, at least far the farming economies were quite consistent. No, exactly. And that, that can provide a bedrock. But unfortunately, how do you get more value to the, the farmer? And that's, you've alluded to that already. But, uh, and, and the problem is politically your urban populations are, are, are actually stronger and have more influence than your rural uh, uh, populations. And here you have a, a, a tension in the sense that uh, urban populations want low food prices, whereas your rural populations would prefer higher food prices. In other words, more, more for their pr product. And unfortunately, it gets skewed. Uh, if, if government policies often skew it in favour of your urban populations. They're the ones that, you know, where you've, you've got parliament and the mob comes up to your own parliament, that kind of thing. Your rural populations tend not to do that. Um, and so that, that's what would concern me. Uh, the other concern, obviously, in Africa, is if you actually have a look over the last 30, 40 years, is that it's a f agricultural output hasn't really improved. In other words, we still need to, to improve um, farming techniques, but also conservation with farming, in other words, to, to make sure that it's not just uh, a slash and burn kind of um, uh, thing, so that you can actually preserve the land for, for right. future use as well. And land security is an important thing. We've got feudal systems in our rural areas, and we need to actually right. commercialise it. Dr. Padiamo Jura, 
creating farming economies. In other words, we've, we're sitting in a situ situation where the urbanization rate is growing. Lots of Africans want to live in cities, but you still go, you have a reality of people who live in rural areas, and you want to make those thriving uh, areas to live, not just farming economies, but the amenities that are in the cities, that infrastructure you talk about being available there, and at least try to curb this tide of urbanization and incentivize people living in rural areas. And I think I'd probably also pick on what Chris touched on in terms of the pressure that you'll have within urban areas, therefore having an influence on your pricing. But at, on the other hand, it's, it's one of saying of governments taking a clear view as, for example, if you look at food security and saying, if you're looking at food security, what, what is the goal or what, what, what does the policy of the specific government look like? Is it trying to ensure that there is adequate food within the households or do they actually the households have enough money to buy the food? And to be clear on that, because you currently have a situation where the policy is mixed up. One is ensuring that the household produce food versus ensuring the households actually have a job mm -hmm. that can enable them to buy, the buy the food, mm -hmm. and that would address your food security concern. And then it comes to the issue of saying that then that also works out in lifting the, the economy levels within your urban areas, meaning that then they can also accommodate swings in price levels, meaning higher prices, they can still afford food, and that is not negated by price, food prices going up, which would, what, what you would require in your rural areas or your economies to, to, bring, to advance them. I mean that on one hand, to develop your, your, your agriculture economies in the rural areas, on one, you need to have a thriving agriculture, an agriculture that can accommodate higher, higher prices and having your urban populations being able to afford those prices. Mm. Because at the end of the day, the other thing that you require is that remember that within Africa, the majority of employment is linked into agriculture. Mm. I mean, the moment you have thriving agriculture, you might have a slower migration into, mm. into your urban areas, but you'd still continue to have it. But you then have an improvement in the quality of life for everyone.